Okay, today we are going to begin making our backgrounds to our Yayoi Kusama pumpkins. Now, once when you receive your pumpkin, I want you to first start thinking about those two groups of colors we've been talking about. The first thing you're going to need to do is before you get your large paper, take a second to relook at that complementary color um, little reference sheet. So identify your pumpkin color that you started with and then follow the arrow to see its complementary color. So my example, I'm working with my purple pumpkin, so therefore I grab my big yellow paper. The next thing is, is you're going to go over to the tall counter by all those little black trays of paper, and you're going to pick a sheet that's closest to your paint color that you can find. So therefore I grab a green sheet. Now to decorate these two papers, we are going to do crayons and texture plates on one of them. So the texture plates again are these black um, kind of square plastic sheets here. And there's many, many different ones. And each side does the texture slightly different. So I encourage you to kind of practice on some scratch paper before you start. But find a couple that catch your eye, and then you will grab at least three sets of those um, naked crayons following those analogous colors that we mentioned. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, I have a reference sheet at that table to kind of help you pick which three you want to focus on. For the other paper, you're going to work with the blue box of those quick sticks. And again, you're going to try to find a set of three analogous colors to work with. If you want, you can check the other table too and pick some other varieties of colors to work with these ones. So I went and checked out that box and I discovered this kind of more magenta one. I'm going to use blue, purple, and magenta versus the blue, purple, and pink in my box. But please, if you take some from the middle table, Make sure that those return to there and don't get mixed up with these 12 colors in our blue box. So that's a very important. Now, let's just review a couple things. These texture plates, in order for them to work, you have to, I'm going to set some of this stuff aside, you have to put your paper on top of it, and you need to really push down hard with the crayons. You're not going to hold it and like as if you're writing or coloring with the tip of the crayon. Instead, you're going to hold it flat against your paper, and you're not going to roll it, but you're going to push down hard and go over it to discover the texture. See, when I push down really hard like this, I can really easily see it showing up. And you're going to have to slide your paper as you do so to get the texture on the whole bottom table piece here. And then, once you get done with one color, you're going to just repeat it with your next two colors as well. So since I'm doing those analogous ones from my bottom here, I chose yellow, kind of a yellow green and a green. So I'm just going to go over with each one. This one has a little bit of sparkles, which will add a little bit more to it as well. Okay, but make sure you really push down hard as you go over each of these. Feel free to, I'm just doing the same texture across my whole table space, but you could use as many different texture plates as you would like. I just thought this one kind of reminded me of the middle design on my pumpkin with these kind of growing circles, so I thought this one would look good. Now, I'm almost done with my last color here, so then I'm going to set this aside. Now, with those quick sticks, just to kind of remind you a couple things of those, they work a lot like a glue stick. So you're going to pull the cap off, you'll have to twist it up a little bit to get it going, but please only twist it up a little bit at a time. If this gets too far up, it's going to be so fragile that it will just break and then it will get wasted. So just crank it up a little bit at a time. I want you to remember that we want our pumpkins to be the emphasis of our work, to stand out the most. So as we decorate these other papers, try not to get them too busy. Less is more in this case. Think of some simple patterns or line designs or even shapes for that matter. But we're not trying to get too crazy on this. So I'm going to kind of begin maybe with a little line pattern. Maybe I'll go long line, short line, long line, short line, long line, short line. Now sometimes if you're not, if you're going too fast or if you don't push down hard enough, you can kind of see through these quick stick lines. I would encourage you to either slow down a bit or kind of go over the line twice, like you see me doing now, to just darken in some of those see-through spots. This is just going to make your background look a little more finished. And once again, we want to work with a set of three analogous colors. Ooh, that's a cool color. So I would continue just to work with these different lines until I fill up my whole background. 
I realize this looks kind of green, but this is actually a blue. Now, you wouldn't have to necessarily do your background design all the way to the bottom of your paper, because remember, we are going to be going back in and gluing this table piece down here. So I could have stopped right here if I wanted to, because the rest gets covered up. Now we're going to pretend that I finished the rest of my pattern all the way across. I went ahead and made a different one on the back just to kind of keep moving us forward. When we glue these things on, please make sure it stays where we want it. Now we don't have to go too crazy and cover this whole thing up with glue. But I have to go around these sides and maybe an X through the middle. Let's get it to the spot on the bottom. But then let's take a quick second to grab one of these rollers and just roll over it. This will just really make sure that the whole thing gets connected to the paper. And then, once you got both things decorated, your next step is just to cut out your pumpkin, which I went ahead and did so. And then you just need to kind of decide how you want to glue it on. Feel free to kind of test out some different tilts or heights on the table, but just make sure that you don't end up gluing it up above this bottom piece of paper, because this is supposed to be the table that it's sitting on. Once again, then you'll just kind of put glue around the backside, roll over it with your roller, and then you can just double check that your name and class codes on the back of your big paper and put it on my desk. All right, have fun.